Welcome to the Dash Mindset Podcast. I'm Sherry Ziefenbergen. You were born, you're gonna die, and your adventure is your dash in between. So make the most of it. Unlock your potential in all aspects of your dash by embracing your uniqueness and living in a way that's authentic to you. Not by doing more things, but by focusing on the right things. I'm a former corporate leader turned coach who's on my own journey, and I'm passionate about helping you on your journey too. So on the podcast, we'll explore how to live authentically by deciphering who you truly are and what you truly want. Are you ready to take a step toward designing your dash? Someday doesn't actually exist. So let's do it now. Hello, and welcome to the Dash Mindset Podcast. Sherry Z here. I so appreciate you being here today. Today, we're going to dive deeper into strengths, specifically into each of the executing strengths. The strengths I often refer to as the get blank done strengths. And I highly suspect you know what uh, what the blank is. So last time I dove into relating strengths. I'll be diving deeper into thinking and influence strengths in future episodes. And overall, I'm continuing down the strengths path for cover reasons. For one, as I mentioned before, it's hard to read the label when you're in the dark. It's really hard for us to recognize our own strengths because it's the way we operate. It's just naturally what we do. They're, they're the talents that we just naturally use on a day-to-day basis. It's just how we live our lives. And another reason I'm diving deeper into each type of strength is because one thing I most often hear from the people I work with is, uh, why can't I have those strengths? Because when they hear about other people's strengths that aren't as natural to them, they think, oh, I want those. Probably similar to you know what a hairstylist hears when somebody with straight hair comes in and says they want curly hair, and someone with curly hair comes in and says they want straight hair. It's just how we operate as humans, which can be exhausting, right? So basically, we have the strengths that we wish we didn't on, you know, um, just that's what I often hear. And we want the strengths we don't. So I encourage you to think differently about that because wishing you had what you don't is exhausting unless there's a way you can just naturally get it, right? So I really want to emphasize that no strength is better than any other. Each strength may be perceived differently by others as better or worse than another because it's based upon their own strengths, right? And the way they operate, it's how you're perceived by others. And it's also going to be based upon the situation, which particular strengths are going to be most useful in that situation, right? So no strength is better or worse than any other. It's just how we perceive them based upon those things. We have access to all of them. We always have access to all of them. So I want to go back to the whole coffee mug thing that I mentioned last time in episode 27. So really hit this home. <laughs> I want to really beat that dead horse. <laughs> so in episode 27, I shared the similarity between strengths and a cupboard full of 34 coffee mugs, which you know most of you, if you're like me, actually have. We can always access all of the coffee mugs in our cupboard. It's just that some are easier to access than others we naturally grab the ones in the front, right? So as we dive into executing strengths today, if you find yourself thinking, oh, I don't have that one. I want that one. I encourage you to think about those mugs, okay? And the fact that you can access any of those mugs, any of those strengths at any time. It's just that it's easier to access some than others. So back to comparing your coffee mugs and strengths. Let's say you have some coffee mugs you you just don't use much. Okay, let's say your aunt Cynthia gave some to you for a wedding gift forever ago. And they're in the back of your cupboard. I mean, they're okay, you like them, but they're just not as practical. Maybe you have to hand wash them. They're just not as easy to use. I mean, who hand washes anything, right? So they're just not as practical to throw in your car. They're just, you know, throw them in your backpack, wherever. They're just not as practical. But you keep them because. You never know when Aunt Cynthia is going to visit. And when she does, if she does, you'll have them. And you'll be able to to access them. You'll be able to get them out. It's just that. It's going to be a little more difficult. You're going to have to pull all the other coffee mugs out to access them. But you will be able to. It's just they're way in the back. So you can get to them when you need them. It's just a little more challenging, right? 
So I want you to consider the fact that it's freeing to know that you can always access Aunt Cynthia's coffee mugs. You can always access any of those springs, any of the 34. You don't have to go through the effort of hand washing all of them every day, right? Because you have the ones in the front that you can access at any time that are just going to be easier for you to use. So hopefully that makes sense. Are you seeing the connection there between coffee mugs and strengths? I, I hope you are. So I'd love for you to think about those mugs as we continue on today. And I, I talk specifically about executing strengths. So to recap where we've been, last time we talked specifically about relating strengths. And relating strengths, people with relating strengths are naturally relationship focused. It's just what they naturally do. It's just how they operate, right? So executing strengths, on the other hand, are about getting things done. They explain how someone gets results. People who have, uh, especially people who have more than one executing strength in their top five, they're the doers. They like to put plans in action. They're really task focused. They want to cross things off their list more so than people who have more relating strengths because people with relating strengths are more people focused, right? So the people with executing strengths like to get things done. And they just do it in a way that's going to allow them to cross something off, off their list. So if you have someone on your team who has executing strengths, these are the people I encourage you to look to to make things happen, to get things done. They're the ones who most easily take ideas and concepts and make them into reality. And they're going to work tirelessly to do it. Or at least they're going to think they're tireless. They, they don't recognize that they're tired because they're so focused on getting the thing done. Sometimes they just believe themselves to have this endless power supply and they're going to get it done. Now, if my husband listens to this episode, he's going to laugh because he is well acquainted with this because I have quite a few executing strengths. And I do. I have a tendency to think, oh, yeah, I don't need sleep, <laughs> which is dumb, right? I get that. So just know that. The people who have a lot of executing strengths aren't necessarily crazy. I mean, there might be a few out there, but it's just how they operate. It's just, it's just who they are. So let's jump into the specifics here. There are nine executing strengths. Achiever, arranger, belief, consistency, which is also known as fairness, deliberative, discipline, focus, responsibility, and restorative. So I'm going to jump into each one of those in more detail. And those were just not the order. Okay, achiever. People who are exceptionally talented in the achiever theme, they have a great deal of stamina and they're really hard workers. They're really focused on getting to the next thing, getting the next thing done. And they get a great deal of satisfaction from being busy and productive. They believe themselves to be tireless, they have strong work ethic, they're go getters. Um, they're intensely diligent and they just want to get things done. Some of the cons associated with being an achiever, being an achiever, is that they have a hard time with balance in some cases. They're too focused on work. And oftentimes, people can think that people with this particular strength care more about getting things done than they do people. And that's not necessarily the case. I mean, obviously, in all instances, there are exceptions. But it's just that they, this is how they're wired and they just naturally are focused on getting the things done. And it's hard for people who have this particular strength to know any other way. So it's not necessarily that they don't want to focus on people more. It's just they don't necessarily know how. So people with this strength are the type who are really... I'm sure if you're you know, one of these people or you know someone like this, it's the type of person who they, they reach a big milestone and they talk about it and say, whoa, yay, you know, for a minute. And then they're immediately on to the next thing. What's the next thing? This um, is one of the challenges that I face throughout my I was gonna say career, but basically life because I was focused on, okay, now I'm going to get this designation. Now I'm going to get this certification. And I remember those, you know, 30 second moments where I would say, yay. And then immediately, okay, what's next? Without really thinking through why, 
exactly. I was focused on the next thing. It's just, it's just how I operated. So um, if you do have the strength, I encourage you to think through, okay, why, why exactly am I focusing on the next thing? And how about I take a couple minutes to really celebrate what I did just accomplish? So I encourage you to think about as we go through each of these, whether or not this resonates with you and a strength you might have, or if someone else comes to mind. So you can better understand the other people in your life too. Okay. The next one is arranger. So arrangers are really organized. They do a good job of organizing, but they do it in a flexible way that um, allows them to organize chaos. So I like to think about arrange people with this particular strength as conductors. So you know how like the conductor on orchestra, there are all the, I'm clearly not a, an orchestra conductor, <laughs> but they're all the instruments, right? And everybody has their role. And a conductor can just easily pull it all together and they know how to arrange it in a way that's going to make sense and make it um, effective. So they like to manage chaos and they can quickly move from one thing to another. And they're always focused on maximum productivity and making things operate in the best way they can. They juggle a lot of things. Um, they're flexible in this particular way. It's, it's different from adaptability, which is one of the relating things I talked about last time, but they, they can uh, flexibly organize. Um, and they're just, they're just focused on multiple things and they're always juggling a lot of things. Now, one of the cons of this is they can be perceived to be too flexible in some cases. They can, it can be perceived that they're lacking any structure and that they're constantly changing priorities because they can switch from one thing to another and rearrange so quickly. Now, I will say, <laughs> this is one of my top five strengths. And so I, my husband struggles with this at times because I will just, I'll, you know, something will just make sense in my head. So I will move something into a place that makes more sense to me because, you know, that's the way I operate. And clearly other people are going to think, oh yeah, I bet she moved it to this other place because that just makes more sense, right? Well, my husband doesn't have this in his top five. And if he did, right, he'd have his own way of arranging. So even if he did, it wouldn't be particularly helpful for either of us. Um, but he will often, I mean, I'll just decide, oh, this thing that we've had in this place for 12 years, yeah, that doesn't really make any sense. We're gonna, I'm gonna move it over here. And so I will, you know, if I'm out about, you know, doing whatever, and my husband's at home, I, I don't know how many times I've gotten a call from him saying, hey, Sherry, where'd you put the, whatever, where'd you put the spoons? <laughs> Yeah, just spoons or something. I think he can count on me to keep those in the store order. I mean, that that just makes sense, right? But and I'll have to stop and think. Oh, right, yeah. What what makes the most sense? <laughs> Whatever it is. So, you know, he doesn't he doesn't understand because why would he, right? Um, so it's important to stop and think about. Okay, what is natural for us and what's going to be um, hard for other people to understand? Someone I I worked with. Uh, has this particular spring. And it's so funny because when I was, we were talking through it, she said, oh, that's why when I made the decision that everyone on the leadership team should, should switch offices and we should, you know, just kind of move things around, why they looked at me like I was crazy and they had no idea where I was coming from because it just makes sense to her. In her mind, she was, she just thought, oh yeah, okay, we get switch this person over here and over here. Yeah, they thought she was nuts, right? So that's just that's just the arranger. That's just is natural for her to think that way and not so much for other people. Okay. Belief. People who have this particular strength have they're just certain about their core values, and those core values are just unchanging. And out of those core values, they have just this um, they're able to define their sense of purpose in their lives. So they're considered dependable. They can be trusted. Um, it's really, it's particularly important for these people 
for people with this strength to um, work in alignment with their values. Now, that's something that's important for everyone, but it's especially important for people who have the belief strength. Now, one thing that can be perceived as unhealthy or can be frustrating to others, a barrier, would be that they can be viewed as being stubborn, uh, maybe less accepting of other people's ideas, sometimes goody two-shoes, and just set in their ways. So that's something to consider. If you are having those frustrations with someone, it could be that they have this particular strength, which is absolutely a strength. It just might be different from yours and harder to understand. So understanding, you know, just just another case of, of why it's important to understand other people's strengths as well as your own. All right, moving on to consistency. It's consistency slash fairness. Uh, you can think of it both ways, but generally speaking, people who have the consistency strength, they're really focused on fairness and everyone, everything being treated the same. So people with this strength really crave a stable routine. They want clarity around rules, around procedures, and they want everyone to follow those rules and procedures. It just makes sense to them. They want to ensure that no one is treated differently than another person. They're problem solvers. They you know, enjoy making policies. They're policymakers. And they're, they're big proponents of fairness. Some of the challenges from the perspective of other people could be that they're viewed as inflexible, that they are just so by the book that they are going to focus on those policies and procedures, and those policies and procedures are going to trump the people involved, that those people aren't necessarily considered. So I'm, I want to give you an example of where I experienced this in uh, my career at one point. It was long, long ago, but when I became more acquainted with strengths, it became, this, this particular situation just kind of popped into my mind because I remember at the time being wildly confused. And now in retrospect, it's so clear. So consistency is not in my top strengths. It is, I don't know, it, like uh, 28 or something like that. I am not into routine. I, um, you know, okay, here's a, a I, I order something different every time I go to a restaurant. <laughs> speaking, because yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna like it, so I gotta find out. Um, you know, someone with the consistency, you know, those people with that strength generally, they then they know what they like. They're gonna do it again. They're gonna order the same thing. Yeah, I'm I'm not like that. So back to my work situation. I am more focused on treating everything and everyone. I guess I'll say, I treat everyone differently. And I'm more focused on the uniqueness of individuals and the, the different needs of individuals. Not to say that people with consistency aren't, that they don't care about those things. It's just not as natural for them. For me, it's more natural to focus on individual characteristics and needs and that's that. So in this work example, we were, this was way before 2020. So at that point, everyone came into an office. That's something you might be familiar with. Um, everyone actually got up, got dressed, drove to an office. And there were there were one or two, or two people who were interested in working from home. So the discussion within the leadership team was, okay, what sort of policy, what sort of procedures, guidelines do we put around working from home? Now, from my standpoint, I thought, what? Why are we having what, what, why are we having a conversation about this? Because to me, I thought, okay, there are two people who want to work from home. Let's think about the guidelines we put in place for those two people. And we can share with other people, hey, interested in working from home? We'll work with you on that, right? Well, a lot of the people in this leadership group were really focused on they wanted to create a set of procedures that applied to everyone. And so they were going through and thinking through all of the different scenarios in which someone might um, take advantage of those guidelines or take advantage of working from home. You know, what if they just went home and did laundry all day? What if they, um, you know, weren't as productive? All these things. And I just remember sitting in that conversation, I'm sure it was one of many, thinking, what? <laughs> just really having a hard time 
understanding. So I was, you know, throwing a lot of questions out there. And but now in retrospect, the individuals who had that stance were just, you know, they wanted everyone to be treated fairly. And I, on the other hand, was it's not that I wanted I don't I don't want things to be unfair, but to me, what's fair is actually treating everyone based upon their own needs and, and unique characteristics, right? So so if that um, resonates with you, you're probably on one 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 side of the fence or the other. Okay. Moving on to deliberative. So people with the deliberative strength anticipate all the things. They anticipate all the obstacles. They weigh all of the the potential dangers and risks. And they're really focused on minimizing those risks. So they're known to have the judgment to make solid decisions. They're not just going to, you know, flip a coin, right? And they think about all the things in advance. They plan for the unexpected. So some of the things that could be considered unhealthy or might be frustrating to, to others might be that they're viewed as being so cautious, they're not able to move forward. They can be considered just afraid to make a decision, afraid to act, um, maybe aloof, um, maybe standoffish. And they're just known for slowing things down. Now, those are, those, those are the perspectives of other people. But with any of these strengths, some of these barriers actually can become true, even for the people that have, who have these strengths. Because when, when we overuse any of our strengths, we use them to a degree that no longer serves us and no longer serves the people around us either. So it's something to keep in mind is it's not just the perspective of other people. We can actually reach that point where they, they stop serving us because we're overusing them. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, moving on to discipline. People who have uh, the discipline strength are, they really enjoy routine and structure. And they want the world to be in an order that they create and just make sense to them. Um, they're particularly good at breaking long-term projects into a series of shorter-term plans. And they are focused on living by that plan and using that as their compass in order to make progress and, and move forward. They're very accurate. They're highly productive. Um, they are able to create and live according to a structure. They're great planners and they're really focused on efficiency. So that, that order from their, from their perspective really establishes that efficiency and lives them, allows them to live and work in a more efficient way. And so it feels particularly good for people with discipline to meet those deadlines that, that they create from the standpoint of others, or if they are using it to a degree that no longer serves them, they can be viewed as rigid, overbearing. Um, they will be viewed as resistant to change, inflexible. So, and that can be the case. If someone is using this, this particular strength to such a degree that it's no longer benefiting them or other people, they can be rigid and inflexible and not really recognize that, you know, that's not serving them. So when it comes to both focus and discipline, I want to point out that both of these strengths are rare. So if we have all, well, we have, we have all 34 strengths, right? And then we look at society as a whole and the population, both focus and discipline are in the, the um, bottom quartile. And so they're, they're uh, less frequently demonstrated in society. So what's also interesting about that is, generally speaking, when we talk about meeting goals, and when I say we, I just mean you know, When we talk about meeting goals, whether that's like a weight loss goal or getting ready for a triathlon or just meeting a particular milestone at work, whatever it is, Words that we often hear are, you just need to be more focused. You just need to be more disciplined. And generally speaking, the people who are saying you just need to be are likely the ones who have focus and have discipline as a strength. So I worked with a client who has those both focus and discipline as strengths. So she's, you know, super rare. And it's 
really funny when having a conversation with her about this and some of the frustration she has with other people because, I mean, she just thinks, why can't they just focus, just create a list, just get the things done, just create a plan and live according to that plan. And so it's really, it was interesting for her to learn that this is actually very rare <laughs> because we think everybody should have the same strengths that you do, right? And we don't consciously think that way, but we just, it seems like, well, doesn't everybody operate this way? No, people uh, with focus and discipline strengths, and definitely both of them, super rare. So um, let's see. Oh, I haven't even talked about, I haven't even walked through focus yet. Okay, so people with the focus strength, they just follow through, they prioritize, and then they act based upon those priorities and the goals they set. Those goals become their compass. They're goal setters. They set those goals and they meet them. So they can be perceived as being um, less than than ideal <laughs> to work with or live with or whatever when they're viewed as being stressed all the time, um, just totally absorbed into what they're trying to accomplish. Intense. If you know someone who has a fo- the focus strength, they're particularly intense. And they have a harder time really enjoying the journey. They are so focused on being focused <laughs> and meeting that goal. They just, they're just focused on the destination, right? So um, focus is not only rare as a strength, but given all of the distractions we have in society now, I mean, we have things beeping and shaking and all the things, all the time, right? So even for someone who has this as a natural talent, it's hard to focus, or more so than I suppose it was back before we had, you know, a bazillion gadget. Um, so for the people who are less natural at being focused, it's especially hard to be focused. So it's just something to keep in mind because it's really easy to say to someone, oh, you just need to focus, you just need to be disciplined. Um, even if it's not a strength, we have a sense to say that, right? So something I would really encourage you to keep in mind is if you have focus or discipline, and especially if you have both, something to consider if you're telling someone else, you just need to be more disciplined. You just need to be more focused. You are going to be wildly disappointed when they're not because they don't know how. I mean, it's just harder for them. It's not that they, someone who doesn't have these as natural strengths can't be. It's just not a just be more focused and disciplined. That's going to get them, that's going to get them going. Now, on the flip side, if you don't have this as one of your strengths, recognize that and recognize, hey, you know, just because someone tells you you need to be more disciplined, you need to be more focused, Stepping yourself up if you're having a hard time doing that. If someone says, you just need to be more disciplined and you need to work out two hours a day. But no, it doesn't take, it doesn't just take discipline. It takes far more than that. So I encourage you to think about those two strengths in particular and really, you know, the fact that if you're beating yourself up, okay, <laughs> think about those coffee mugs. Those are the mugs from, you know, Sophia, Sophia way in the back. And you can do it, but, you know, it's going to be harder. All right. Now we're going to move on to the last two. Responsibility. People who have this particular strength, they really take psychological ownership of what they say they're going to do. They're honest, they're loyal. Um, it's almost an obsession to, to get things done, to get to get the things done that they say they're going to get done. They're reliable. Um, so they do things right, they want to do the right thing. And they do what they say they're going to do. So they're committed, generally independent, very conscientious, um, and, and they hold themselves accountable. So some of the things that can frustrate others about this, or if they are getting to the point where they're no longer serving themselves by or using this strength, they can be viewed as micromanaging, maybe obsessive, um, a really hard time of letting go of things. So one of the clients I worked with at one point had both this strength, responsibility, and deliberative. The one we talked about earlier, 
that was all about considering all the risks, considering all the obstacles and thinking through those through. So given the combination of responsibility, responsibility and deliberative, she not only took ownership and sure things got done, she also thought everything through. And she's finding herself frustrated in her position and wondering why. Because generally speaking, when she thought about her position and the people she worked with, she really enjoyed it. But when we talked through her strengths, she realized, oh my gosh, I am not in the right position because she realized she had very little decision-making authority and she had very little control over the decisions other people's other people were making. She was able to, to provide to influence to a degree, but not to the degree she really needed to, to really um, live into her strengths and feel like she was being utilized to the degree she she really should be. So we thought about different positions. She she explored instead. And she actually, within I think it was two or three weeks, she applied for another job and got it. And she's been so much happier in that job because, you know, to be someone who is takes ownership and thinks through all the things and then not having the ability to make any decisions with that is really just soul sucking. So, so just, you know, think about that. Um, the people with responsibility are, you know, people with any experience, they are often the people that, that get all the things. Everybody gives them all the things because they know those things are going to get done. Um, with responsibility, specifically, people with that strength have a hard time saying no because they really think, oh, oh yeah, I could do that. I can take ownership of all these things and I should. So that's also something to, to really watch for. If you are working with someone who continues to say yes, you might have a tendency to continue to give them the things to say yes to. Um, but really, you know, they have uh, a capacity, whether they realize it or not. So it's something to be aware of so they don't get burned out. Okay, last one is restorative. People who have the restorative strain are really, they really enjoy problem solving and they are energized by it. So they like to analyze the problems. They like to figure out okay, what's wrong, how do we find the solution. Um, they enjoy bringing things back to life. So they like to troubleshoot, uh, find improvements and solutions. Something that can be unhealthy about this particular strain of overusing it is they just focus on the weaknesses and they stay focused on the weaknesses. They can become really negative, really critical. They can just point out problems all the time because from their standpoint, like, okay, I'm pointing out problem. Yeah, that's a good thing, right? You, you don't want to be living with this problem, but then they can stay in it. And so that can be really draining to other people who really don't understand why they're just constantly focused on problems. So that is only something to consider too. They are good at solving the problems, but they can get pulled in to the extent where they, they're not even solving. They're just focused on the problem itself. So those are all the specific executing strengths. And people who have, especially if they have more than one executing strength, they have a tendency to prefer working independently. Now, like any of the strengths, it also depends upon the other strengths someone has. Because, so for instance, I have, um, responsibility is one of my strengths too. I really enjoy working independently. However, based on some of my other strengths, I also enjoy working with people. So I need a combination in my life, which is, you know, also one of the reasons why I don't like routine. I don't have that particular strength. So um, they have a particularly hard time delegating because in general, they know they can do it themselves and they have a tendency to think they should be able to do things themselves, everything, all things. Um, and so why not? Why wouldn't they? I mean, that's their preference. So now from the perspective of someone who doesn't have a lot of executing strengths, it's easy to see when someone who does is overusing them. It's easy to see when someone, you know, is sleeping four hours a night, they shouldn't be sleeping more than that. It's easy to see and to point out. And it's also easy to keep giving people with those strengths more things to do. 
So I really encourage you to think about that and say through, okay, how can I help people not overuse these strengths? And how can I be more understanding when someone is using a lot of these strengths? It's not something to take personally, um, although we have a chance to do that. It's just how they operate, right? So, but it's, it's what the starting point is being aware of what those strengths are, being aware of our own and being aware of other people's too. And that's how, how we can help um, one another and understand one another as well. Okay, on the other hand, if you are someone who does not have extreme strengths in the top five, and you are someone who thinks, oh, yeah, that's why I don't get anything done. <laughs> I encourage you to think through what your strengths are and lean into those further. Recognize that there are other people who have executing strengths and your strengths are going to complement the strengths of the person who does have executing strengths if you don't. So just think, you know, go back to these mother's compliments. Think about the fact that your executing mugs are in the back. You can access them if you want, but also think about how you can work with other people who do have those strengths. So when it comes to doing the things you don't do naturally, rather than beating yourself up and focusing on how challenging those things are, I encourage you to think about how freeing it is instead. How freeing it is to let go and realize, you know what, that's not strength of mine, and that's okay. Those coffee mugs are in the back. I have other coffee mugs that are in the in the front that I can access far easier, and I'm going to utilize those ones all the time and focus on those instead. So, I hope something in this episode resonated with you. I have talked about relating strengths in episode 27. Talked about executing strengths, and we really dove into this into existing strengths this time. And so I encourage you to think through which ones in particular resonate with you, which ones remind you of other people, and really just take some time to reflect this week to consider what you are noticing about yourself. Give yourself the time and space to do that and consider what you're noticing about others as well and recognize that it might not be that they are trying to make your life miserable. (laughs) It might just be their strengths. Right? So when we understand ourselves and we understand others, it just makes life easier. So I hope you have a great couple weeks and thank you again for being here today. Thanks so much for listening to the Dash Mindset Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe on your favorite podcast player, tell your friends and leave us a review. Follow me on my social media platforms highlighted in the show notes and get in touch with me at thedashmindset.com. Share the topics you'd like me to explore in future episodes. Thanks again for listening to the Dash Mindset Podcast. We'll see you next time. Design and differentiate your Dash, your way, and make today amazing.